at exactly 2.17 a.m., September 8, 2025. A Russian Rapusha-class landing ship, 112 meters of Cold War steel, pushes through the black water. Its engines rumble, diesel fumes hanging in the night air. On deck, sailors smoke, laughing softly under the glare of floodlights. Inside the bridge, radar arms sweep in perfect rhythm. Sonar hums steady, nothing unusual. To the officers, the sea feels empty, secure, theirs. But in that same darkness, something else moves. Just above the waves, a fiberglass shadow skims the surface, no bigger than a jet ski, flat against the swell, almost invisible. Ukraine's homemade sea drone, built in a garage, hunting a warship worth a hundred million dollars. One question. Can a weapon cheaper than a used car cripple a hundred million dollar Russian warship? Spoiler, the mission was a success. In the next eight minutes, you'll discover how asymmetric tactics flipped the balance of naval warfare, why Russia's old warships are vulnerable in ways no admiral predicted, the shocking evolution of Ukraine's sea drones, from garage projects to fleet killers. Did you know something built with a laptop, a motor, and 250 kilos of explosive is rewriting naval warfare? Russia's $60 million warships can't stop it. More than a dozen vessels are already crippled, and tonight's strike shows how the hunter turned hunted. Forget the history books. This is the new face of naval combat. Raw, asymmetric, rewriting the rules of engagement in real time. And this breakdown isn't like the others. Here, you get the context, the tactics, the truth behind the footage. Subscribe for the intelligence brief you won't find anywhere else. The Rapusha was born for invasion. A steel beast meant to storm the shore, slam down its ramp, and disgorge tanks, troops, and firepower. But Cold War giants age badly. Its armor and guns were built to dual fleets, not to swat ghosts on the waterline. Against fast, disposable hunters, the Rapuka is a relic, big, loud, predictable. And into that weakness slides Ukraine's sea drone, small, faceless, almost invisible. A fiberglass phantom, carrying the kind of punch that doesn't just pierce steel, it pierces confidence. This isn't a weapon you show the crowd on parade day. It's a weapon you hide in silence, waiting until the sea itself betrays the warship. For 40 minutes, the drone simply stalks. It rides the swell, hugging the radar's blind edge while the ship goes about its business. The operator watches every frame on a battered laptop, infrared feed flickering, miles away, eyes glued to a pixelated silhouette. One wrong move, one unexpected ping, and the whole mission dies. To the crew on the Rapucha, the sea is empty. To the pilot, the hull fills the screen. A hundred million dollar warship, stalked by something built in a garage. If the crew sees it first, it's over. But tonight, they don't. But the crew finally sees it. Too late. At 1.2 kilometers out, the operator slams the throttle forward. The fiberglass drone shudders under the sudden burst, motor screaming as it cuts a jagged white wake across the black water, spray lashing over the hull like liquid lightning. On the bridge, a blip finally appears on radar. Contact bearing 240. Alarms pierce the silence. Crew scramble in controlled panic, boots pounding, voices cracking over the comms. Gunners spin barrels, loading, aiming, firing. At 800 meters, the AK-630s unleash tracer fire, arcs of molten metal slicing through the night. Explosions crash into the sea, water erupting in geysers around the tiny phantom. But the drone is engineered for survival in chaos. Its low profile skims just above the wave crests. Radar returns scatter. Sonar pulses dissipate. Every shot overshoots, undershoots, misses by centimeters. Physics is on the drone's side. Minimal mass, low drag, near invisible thermal signature. At 400 meters, realization dawns. The crew grips the railings. This is no driftwood, no unmanned boat. It's a precision killer, suicide bound and locked on their stern. Heartbeats accelerate, calculations fail, defensive fire turns into frantic splashes. The drone rides the last swell like a phantom, unwavering, unstoppable. 
In seconds, the distance collapses, the ocean becomes a chessboard, and every ounce of steel aboard the Rapucha faces an enemy born in a garage. By the time the crew comprehends the inevitability, it's already too late. Seven seconds out, the operator jerks the drone left, weaving between tracer fire streaking across the black water. Five seconds, crosshair locks on the stern, directly above the engine room. Three seconds, manual control engaged, stabilization off. The camera shakes violently from spray and bullets, yet the pilot's focus never wavers. One second, arming switch clicks. Then impact, a thunderclap rips the silence. Fire erupts from the stern, devouring steel and fuel alike. Shockwaves slam the hull, sending tremors through decks and bulkheads. Secondary explosions ignite ammunition and crates, ripping through compartments. The Rapucha lurches violently, tilts, then falls still, dead in the water. Physics speaks here. Momentum, explosive overpressure, structural fatigue, every calculation amplified in real time. A hundred million dollar predator, toppled by 50 kilos of carefully engineered destruction. In that instant, chaos becomes geometry, courage meets precision, and the night whispers the new rules of naval warfare. On deck, chaos erupts. Marines stumble from their bunks, coughing in smoke. Engineers race with fire hoses, but the engine room is gone. The ship's heart burns. It won't sink, but it won't sail either. The mission, landing troops on Crimea, is finished. A hundred million dollars of hardware erased by a weapon cheaper than a mid-range smartphone. This wasn't just a hit. It was a doctrine kill shot. Russia's Navy now knows, no ship is safe. Not a patrol boat, not a frigate, not even a landing ship the size of a city block. Every fishing boat, every drifting crate, every speck on the radar could be death on approach. This is the nightmare of asymmetric war. The battlefield shifts from tonnage and firepower to psychology and paranoia. At 2.17 a.m., the Rapusha was the predator. By 2.29, it was prey, crippled, burning, humiliated. Not by submarines, not by fighter jets, but by a drone built in a garage with a GoPro eye and a warhead in its gut. This is the new face of naval combat. Cheap, clever, ruthless. And if you see the decoy in front of you, it means the real killer is already behind you. What happened to the Rapucha wasn't just tactics, it was physics and engineering colliding on the battlefield. A fiberglass hull rides lower, almost invisible to radar. Infrared signatures vanish against the sea's thermal noise. The drone's small propeller produces no cavitation trail, making sonar nearly useless. Add GPS stabilization, a cheap camera, and remote guidance, and you get a weapon that turns ocean into chessboard. This isn't improvisation, it's systems engineering scaled down, democratized. For the first time in naval history, destructive power isn't measured in tonnage, but in algorithms, composites, and signal discipline. And that changes everything. Share this video. Let the world see how Ukraine's ingenuity rewrites naval warfare. Subscribe for more exclusive briefings. Every view, every share counts. Stand with Ukraine.